We used to call him the gentle giant. You know, he played hockey, played lacrosse. And when people tell me how big he is, how kind he is or whatever, and I always say that I feel like God made him so big because his heart is so big. He's never, to my knowledge, ever hurt anyone intentionally. I think he broke somebody's arm one day, and, and I know then he called and he was at the hospital or, or going there to see the boy on the other team. He's just kind and gentle and good. One of the best qualities about our son that, that I can recall, it was when Ed Agajanian, his high, high school lacrosse coach, would introduce him. He would always say the first on the field and the last off. What he has achieved in the ranks of high school, college, you know, his four years at Ohio State, 12 years in the MLL, in addition to playing indoor box lacrosse, he's done it all. He's a force. And Anthony, he always looked after the younger players. He, he, he was that kind of a role model. And, and for any young attendee or graduate from St. Ignatius High School, I, I don't think you could say anything uh, to be more proud of. We used him in ways we'd never used players before. We ran a defense that we completely readjusted it because of Anthony. But Anthony was never the brute of a player. He was a game changer. People used to scheme for him but he was never the guy who was putting people on the fifth row of the bleachers and you know knocking guys out. And As big and as strong as he is, his biggest skill is his head and his hands. He has the softest hands of any big guy I ever coached. Then when I think of Anthony, I always just think of a competitor. The guy never liked to lose anything. I can tell you, one time we were playing pickup lacrosse in the middle of the season, we both went for the same ground ball, and I kind of pulled up because, you know, I was like, Anthony, you know, we don't want to make a lot of contact, we're in season. And he came and he just plowed me and he chopped my hand pretty bad. And, uh, you know, Anthony and I got into it a little bit, but that's the way he was. I mean, he competes in everything and he hates losing. And he's just a competitor through and through. And, and, and as his teammate, that's a guy you want on your team. There couldn't be a better ambassador for the sport, uh, not only as a representative of St. Ignatius, but just the state of Ohio. and in general to grow the sport in Ohio the way that we've seen it grown from you know 25 years ago to where it is now and where he's taking it with his career a resolute lacrosse that he runs and is an owner of there that's all they do is grow the sport and they're doing phenomenal things with indoor lacrosse that has never been done in the state of Ohio before all the way to the elite teams that he takes around and the development of the players and I can tell you firsthand from someone who grew up not having a lot of coaching to go to at an early age uh, for lacrosse, to have the ability to go to a professional or a world level player to learn and have coaches like that surround you at an early age is just unbelievable for children and, and then the overall growth of the sport. Recognizing Anthony for lacrosse is, is important because uh, it, it was not a popular sport back uh, when, when we played. Uh, when I was in high school, the first time we picked up a stick was here at Ignatius. I think there were two other teams in Northeast Ohio that we could even play against. And um, Anthony kind of came up in that world, went into college when it started to get more popular, and then uh, joined Major League Lacrosse when it was really starting to, to pick up. And, in some ways, he was really a part of that, that core group that was the leadership team that helped to put the sport on the map, and, and uh, I'm proud of him for that. Anthony will always be on the fence and always at the door, and you couldn't ask for a, a better example of St. Ignatius going out in the world. He was always there for everybody else, and he always put himself last. You know, I think as a player, when I was in hockey here, you know, hockey's unique because Hockey's the one sport, one of the sports where you can't just go out and practice all the time, right? You can't get out on an ice rink. I went to the guy at the rink and talked to him and asked him what time he came in in the morning. He told me he would open the doors at 5.15 for me. So I used to wake up at 4.30 in the morning and go and carry the old school boom box with me, plug it in, uh, slap a CD in there, and I would practice for an hour by myself before anybody else even got there. And then uh, I started doing that my junior year of high school. And as things grew, um, you know, more and more of the guys would come out and then eventually got to the point where the whole team would be out there for basically an extra hour of just kind of fun practice. Really, to be honest with you, I never thought I'd be sitting here today. And, uh, you know, it's a huge honor. It's just awesome to have the people that I've had, one, give me the opportunity to come to St. Ignatius, and then two, the role models that I've had to kind of get me here. Number one being my older brother. You know, he's one of the most successful, hardest working guys I've ever met in my life. Striving to keep up with him. I think is, uh, is something that helped motivate me from the athlete side of things. And obviously my parents are grateful for what they sacrificed and what they gave 
to send my brother and, and myself here, you know, to be able to, to graduate from the school, carry the things that I've learned, you know, and, and really put me on that direct path for success for the rest of my life. And, um, you know, forever grateful for that.